I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with MJ Rodriguez, the mother of all mothers, Blanca Evangelista herself. Um, and MJ, you know, with the show ending, I keep thinking about that final, that just that final moment of, of Blanca walking off into the, into the dimly lit streets of New York. And I, and I have to wonder, what was going through your mind with that long walk uh, at the end of the series? As I was walking down and I just saw the light, you know, like all the way down like the road, I, as I was walking down that road, I just saw endless possibilities, not only for Blanca, but for, for me and, you know, the, the journey that I've been on. That's what that road, all of those things were per, like permeating in my head. Just, it was a long road of great work that we all did together and what a joy that I got to be a part of it. What a joy that I actually got to lead it. What a joy to actually be a, a person that's in the forefront of, you know, a movement. And also, uh, I mean, I feel like it, it, it was a metaphorical message for every single thing I was going through. Not only was it the journey or the light at the end of the, end of the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel, but it was the growth from first season until third season. First season, I was this girl who wanted to fit in, wanted to make sure I fit in with the crowd as far as the you know upper, you know, real, real, real top, top dogs. And I wanted to really try to prove myself. And I never said that, I just did it. Um, I don't know if it was red, but I was a very, very, I was confident, but also still insecure at the same time because this was a huge position to fill. And I was so happy that I've learned not only from my cast members, but from the crew members, from producers of the show. And I've just grown from the wisdom that they's, they've instilled in me, from the lessons I've learned from the writings on the pages. And to see Blanca come out so beautifully, to see her get what she deserves, to see she's receiving the fruits of her labor, to see her walk and see that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, that there is a future for her. I saw all of that in me at the end of the third season and I'm very, very proud of the work we've done. And now I can say I'm very proud of the work I've done. And I just hope that Michaela J outside of Blanca continues to do the work. I, I pray that I keep instilling hope and joy into people through all the many endeavors that I have. And, you know, I, Pose has taught me a lot and I'm just, just so happy, but yeah, walking down that, a street and it was close to the last day of shooting. It was, it was beautiful. It was so symbolic too. Yeah, I, I, I think about the last kind of, the, of Blanca giving advice to the younger, you know, the young new house and telling them to work harder and reach higher until they triumph. And, and I, I wonder if in that moment you felt like you were also sending a message to all those younger LGBTQ people, uh, also people of color about what the future could possibly hold. Was that also going through your mind? Yeah, I definitely thought about all of those things. Seeing that play out in the way that Pray Tell did it in first season and to see Blanca being the one to tell it to a new generation, it just reminded me that there's a cycle that has to be repeated when it comes to encouraging a, a generation of LGBTQAI plus individuals to keep fighting the good fight and to live and to never let anyone tell you that you're not deserving or that you're not worthy. Instead, you're all of those things and you can do it from the ballroom scene and you can also do it from the television screen. Am I trying to rhyme with that? Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> it works for me too. <laughs> She's a rapper. Um, <laughs> no, but... Yeah, I just, I feel like that's was completely running through my mind. And, you know, there were moments where I was just like, Michaela, girl, don't you jump out of character. You can't, you can't jump out of character in this moment. It's hit, it was hitting me that hard. It was hitting close to home that hard. Cause as I was saying the wor those words, as I was hearing it from Pray Tell, Billy Porter, I was saying them to myself. Are there, are there elements of Blanca that you have kind of worked to adopt into, into yourself? Yes, there are a lot of elements of Blanca that I've tried to adopt into myself. Um, 
I've always tried to say this in the beginning of, beginning of my interviews too, that Blanca and I are so different. And I think that's what makes it so inspirational. I look to her a lot now more than I ever have because it's, it's done. And I look to her and see all of the work that she's really achieved. And I just look at her like, I want to do that. Your inspiration to me, girl, like I want to be a mother. I want to be able to sustain a house. I want to feel like I have a future. I want all of those things and more. And she instituted that in me. She made me believe in myself even more. You know, that's what Blanca did for me. And I feel like that's what the differentiation is between me and her. A woman who didn't have a, a family due to her mother dying and then her family members ostracizing her. A woman who didn't have money, who came from nothing. A woman who was demonized, still chose to succeed and still chose to prevail. That is the inspiration that I strive and want. And with her doing that from first season, being a little bird flying out of the, out of the nest, to third season becoming a whole woman, she's shown me how much of a leader she is and how much I want to achieve to be like that and how much I want to be a leader. I think I am one now. I think, you know, I think Blanca knows she's one. And these are things that I work towards. And I look to her for that. And I'm going to always have her on my shoulder, you know, giving me words of advice and giving me words of upliftment. <laughs> I, I read that Billy Porter had said that, you know, no, but there is no, uh, booklet that teaches somebody how to be the lead uh, on a series. And mm -hmm. when you started this, you know, you had never been the lead, you know, in a television series before. So um, what did Billy, Billy has called you kind of like, he can't do what he does without you. What, what did you learn from Billy um, in terms of, you know, how you have built yourself as a performer and a person on set? I would say what I've learned from Billy is that he has confidence and he has, um, he's just, he's just fabulous. And he is an amazing co-worker. I, I just like, I love being a part of a show with him. He, he makes it so easy and he's seasoned, you know? I feel like that's the thing that I've learned from him. I'm gonna, it's gonna take me a long time before I become seasoned, you know, but he has already had that. And I came into Pose, you know, trying to fit into that mold. And I think I did a pretty darn good job, but um, I was still a young and I was 26 years old, you know, just really trying hard to memorize her lines, stay on top of it, trying to be the leader that I know I could be. Um, while Billy just jumped right into it, but that's because he was, in the industry for 35 years and he had it under his belt. For me, I was the girl who was learning and, and growing as it went on. And um, I'm really happy because I, one thing I will say for myself is that I never faltered. I never, I never saw myself going down a path of worry. I always made sure I looked to the people of, obviously my peers on the, in, in the cast of the show, but also looking to myself because at the end of the day, you only have yourself to lift up. So Billy has taught me so much. And one thing that I've taken away from him and looking at him, sometimes he didn't even have to say anything. I would just be watching and, you know, I would take note, like, okay, I did that. Okay, check mark, you did that before MJ. Oh, you never done that, check mark, something to work on, you know? Um, and yeah, it's been beautiful. I, I, I think he's a great mentor and teacher. I feel like the, the, the love between Blanca and Pray Tell is all encapsulated in that wonderful scene in the ballroom with the two of you dancing together. And it feels like everything between you, and Blanca actually says it at one point, you know, that, that, all, that there were no words left unsaid between Pray Tell. Uh, right and Blanca and the eye contact that you two have during that scene. I have to imagine that that scene was both really challenging to pull off, but also probably a, a scene of complete joy. Yes, it was extremely challenging because there was rain and water and you know, we had to dips and stuff, but <laughs> no, but it was and definitely- reveals. Don't forget the reveals. And reveals, how dare I forget that? That's, <laughs> whoa, um, thank you for checking me on that. Whoa, <laughs> no, but as far as, um, 
the the depth of the scene. It was very challenging. It was emotionally challenging because we had come so far together in the show. He, he played Preto with such heart and love and to be the sister of that. He was the brother to my sister and I was the sister to his brother. You know what I mean? If that makes sense. <laughs> um, and, you know, it just, it was great to really solidify that moment and people seeing the two leads of the show and showing the differentiations between a strong male lead and a strong female lead and how we both can carry it together. And um, I just really appreciated that. I, I loved him for that and I still love him for that. And the emotions are still running high. I'm trying not to cry right now because I don't think there'll ever be a moment like that again. I don't think there'll ever be a show like Pose again. And I don't think there'll ever be a chance to really enjoy and, and have moments of reminiscing those first and second seasons of work that we really have put into and then to come the third season in that moment on the last finale, the last episode to just let it all out and just really show what we, the hard work we put in. So um, it was very emotional but I loved it and I enjoyed it and I cried while dancing. You know, I'm glad those tears hit those tears. I'm glad those, that, that rain hit those tears. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just enjoyed and I enjoyed it more than anything with him. And the sisterhood, I would imagine on- Oh, yes. Between, between all of you, um, you know, you all really do kind of, you, you're a family on screen and I have to believe that that trend that continued off screen, between, mm -hmm. especially between the girls. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, the girls, I've, I've known them for a long time as well. So like our relationships are much more and now beyond even the show. I mean, I feel like that's what created such great camaraderie and, and great chemistry on the show is that we had that connection and also we had that shared experience as trans women of color who've never had an opportunity to tell our story like how posed a lot of us to do. And with that, I feel like it was only destined for us to connect even more and become more of a family. So I talk to them on a daily day-to-day -day basis. I just spoke to Dominique yesterday, like, this show has made all of the cast members crucial and key people in my life. And it's never gonna end. It's never gonna stop. We're always gonna keep in contact now. Is there, is there something in terms of, you know, these, these women and, you know, the fact that it is a, a show made up of trans women of color, mm -hmm. um, is, are there things about, about, the community, the ballroom community, or just the LGBTQ community at large that you learned through the process of doing this show that maybe you thought you knew, but you didn't, you hadn't really thought about before. You know, and that's crazy that you asked that because I did think I knew everything. And one thing that I did not know is the amount of energy, and I've been there, the energy is surging, but the amount of energy when there is someone who is legendary and the, 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 the plateau or platform that they put them on because they've done so much within the community. I hadn't seen it like how I saw it on Pose, you know, and it was just beautiful. It was so, it was just so wonderful to see. You know, I hadn't seen it as extravagant and as exemplified as it, as it was when it was on the television screen. And I'm so happy that the world got to see that. I'm so happy that the world got to see an even more accelerated version of how we as ballroom individuals, the ballroom culture loves on each other, you know? Yeah. I, I I would think that dramatically uh, one of the most difficult scenes would have had to have been, you know, the, the scene where you're reading, you know, Praytel's letters to, to everybody, because it really is just one big extended monologue uh, for you. And you're having to 
you know, run this emotional gamut. What was filming that particular scene like? Because it really is just, it's, it's so dependent on your performance and, and you knock it out of the park. Oh, thank you. I mean, it was a trying one. It was hard. Um, I made sure that for me, it was important to stay in character as much as possible because this was a eulogy for someone. This was not only just someone, it was pray tell. And I felt Belanca had to constantly drive her emotions through that. I didn't want to stop. And we had a lot of takes. We had about four or five takes of that, um, simply because of camera angles and everything and everybody in the scene. It was hard even knowing that there were other people having the camera turned on them and I was behind the camera, but I had to give them what I needed to give them in order for them to get to the scene as well and vice versa. So um, it was challenging, but I'm so happy that even hearing from you that I met the challenge and that I did what I needed to do because it was on the right. This story of a ballroom icon we know as Pray Tell, what a way for Blanca to be able to send him off the way he needs to be sent off. And um, yeah, it was beautiful. It was, it was lovely. Uh, two words, Jeremy Pope, go. Jeremy Pope, dope, work. Jeremy Pope is a dream to work with. I love that guy. And I actually had a, like a great relationship with him before Pose. I had seen him in this show that I was a part of a while ago and um, our paths kept crossing. And then I was in one of his music videos and then boom, right then and there, you know, Jenna Mark was like, guess who's gonna be on the show with you? I was like, who? She was like, I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> And I was like, all right, girl. And then um, like three days, maybe even a week later, she told me and it was Jeremy. And I was like, perfect. I mean, we already have chemistry. We've already had time to work together. What a beautiful way to do it with him. Where do you think we are? I mean, the word representation, I think, gets thrown around so much that sometimes people get jaded by it. I think some people you know, miss the importance of it. Where do you think we are in terms of you know, not just queer representation, but specifically trans representation and representation for people of color on television, because Pose is really a really important stepping stone in that process. I think um, as far as representation goes, as far as the trans community, it, it could be a bit better. You know, I, I think there's so many wonderful talents out here that are aspiring and also who've been here, who want that backing, who want the love and the solidification of protection and safety within the industry. You know, and that's what representation is. It's literally backing and fronting for someone who doesn't or probably hasn't had the voice to do so. So I feel like it could definitely be a bit better. I, there's always work to be done. I also feel that it's been great. I feel like Hollywood has made a beautiful step forward in putting our lives on display in the best way possible and telling our stories as real and authentically as they can. Um, but yeah, I mentioned something earlier today. I mean, we definitely cracked the grass glass ceiling, but the pieces haven't shattered and fallen yet, but we've still cracked it. So that means at some point it's going to break and it's going to fall down and there won't be any questions as to why or how or when representation needs to be um, fought for. There will be a time where we won't have to worry about, about that. But right now, um, it could be a bit better. And when that feeling breaks, you're gonna just bust right through it. Oh baby, yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. I'm ready to bust right through it and fly and soar into the sky. Oh, I'm about to break this glass over here, child. Did you hear me? <laughs> uh, everybody go to goldderby.com, make your predictions for the Emmys, and stay tuned with interviews uh, for more, with more contenders throughout the season. MJ Rodriguez, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are amazing, Tony. I'm so glad I got to do this with you again.